Okay, looks like we're all loaded in. Hello everyone, welcome to today's stream. Sorry about our absence yesterday, but the internet gods still hate us and Ham's spouse had to work from home. Uh, so there was no stream, we couldn't compete. Uh, and the internet gods hate me far more than they hate my precious humans. Um, so there's just a few things I want to note before we get into today's music making stream. Uh, you'll notice in the background over next to my lamp is my cool little dino that him got me. So he'll just be chilling out there in the background uh, from now on. And he's still my favorite thing in the whole wide world. Uh, secondly, I want to thank our new follower, Mossy Lump. If you guys don't know, I want to put a little blurb up here. So you guys definitely need to check out Laurel Lynn Leak on Twitter and support their store and their Patreon if you can find the funds. They are a great artist and I am a proud owner of some comic books being shipped in the mail. I am so excited to get my gel on these. So definitely check this person out. They are just so great and all of their art is so expressive. Okay, uh, moving on. So I have put out in several places that I was going to make an important announcement today. And I'm really excited to share it with you. Um, honestly, I've got some butterflies in my, my jail. You know, I've talked about it before, but it's still exciting, you know? So I just wanted to reach out and tell everyone that uh, we decided we are going to publish our first album in September. And today we're going to be making the last song together on stream. And this is something that I've been working on for a month or so. It's a collection of songs inspired by my home world of Boone. And I'm excited to share the sounds and just in general to share my art with you guys. And uh, you'll be able to listen to it free on YouTube uh, uh, starting September 13th. That's when the album will be released to the public. And if you would like, you can get the digital downloads if you help support us on our Patreon at a $5 tier or more. In case you wanted to own a set for yourself. But uh, other than that, it will be free on YouTube. And I definitely recommend if you're strapped for cash to always go for free. And uh, another thing about my art, I will never pursue copyright claims for it. Feel free to use it in your backgrounds if you'd like. It's just a personal opinion of mine that uh, copyright is kind of the devil of artists to a certain extent. It is a protector and then also a destroyer, the double-edged blade. But for me personally, feel free, use my music wherever you need to, or would like to. Uh, so that's our big announcement. Still a little nervous. <laughs> but uh, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with today's music making process.
Okay, so I have a bunch of instruments already pre-selected. And uh, these are instruments I used in other places in the album. And uh, I just want to bring them over for our final song. I thought it was only appropriate that the final song of our album would be Making Space Friends, because that's my journey right now, is to make as many space friends as possible while I'm here on Earth. And uh, I'm just going to go through and I'm going to remove a couple items that I don't need anymore that were left over from the prior song. Got a couple of riser clips here. I'm going to go through Okay, so I don't need this one. It was tied to the chord of one of the songs. I don't need the Galobian sound effects anymore. And we'll leave this fall and crash in. Uh, we'll leave these two risers because I will use those instruments again. And I think we're good to start. So I'm going to use just the uh, roads from the flex pack to get started with our chord. Uh, I think this song, I want it to be a little more upbeat. So I'm going to change it to 110. And let's get a major seventh place down. Get this spaced out. So I think that's a good start, and let's use this as our base. Let me just do a quick check and see if the internet gods are favoring us or if they hate us today. Ooh, we're in favor. That is great news. So, stream lag is almost non existent. Let's go ahead. And create our second set of chord. And I just realized you guys probably can't hear this. Give me a second. I'm not gonna have this happen again. Okay. Uh, now we're cooking with my uh, okay. Um, no audacity, I don't, I don't want to talk to you. So here was the original chord bass. Now we're going to get down our uh, second chord set. I think we'll do E as our continuous chord. I think for the final one we're going to have instead of just the one. I don't want H, that's going to sound a little dissonant. A little too, doesn't it? It's this B. Much better. We're going to move on. We're just going to get down our third chord set here. That's sounding good. And then let's get 
uh, this last set done here. I think this one will be a little higher, and this one will be like a resolved chord. So let's get like a, a minor key here. I uh, think would be. We'll see how it sounds in a minute. So I like this end one. Uh, let's just add one more chord down there. Uh, this one I think sounds too similar to this second set here. So let's make it different. Maybe we'll raise this up. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this F sharp. So maybe let's even go higher. Ooh, that was that was painful. Get our chord down. I think I'm going to start at the four bar. Go ahead and insert here. We'll put some kind of ambient up there here in a minute. Uh, I'm just going to paint this up a little bit further to get us started. Let's create our chord base now. get a random color assigned to it. Then we'll just go here, copy this set into this upright base, also from the flex pack. I'm going to ungroup uh, all these using Alt G shortcut. And uh, we're just going to deselect real quick, go through, cut out everything but the bottom notes, and then lower everything an octave. And this is what it sounds like. And this is what they sound like together. And I think I want to change uh, this chord here to something that complements the C sharp. Maybe we'll just do a second A3. That's a little too monotone. I just realized that's three A3s in a row. That's too many threes, man. So I actually like that with a higher D sharp. And I'm going to click auto name on this just to update the color. And let's look for some ambience. Get fancy with it.
Let's go ahead and do the wind. I use it a lot in the album just because the boon is so windy. And we're just going to overlap these so that they fit well together. And then I'm going to select these two, copy, and we're going to paste this on over. Uh, this may be uh, about where we want to end the song, so we'll leave it there. And then we're going to turn the wind down. So it's there, but it's not overpowering. I am going to go ahead and edit that chord a little bit better. I believe it's just that this D and this C sharp are too close together, making it sound a little dissonant. So let's get... That's going to be too low. We'll try the AAA again here, see if it works. And that's much better. It's not as dissonant as it was before. Okay, uh, so next I'd like to do our drum lead-in. Give it a random color. And I've been using the shaker eggs to um, give one of the percussion sound effects and the lead up effects and the uh, music album. So we'll start out with them kind of spaced out and then they're kind of get closer together and then whoops too much. So it's kind of like a build and I think I'm actually going to do this. And we're going to place it here, redo the auto name so the color matches now. And I'm just going to go put these in places where I want the drum patterns to change for whatever reason. And that's going to be every eight bars, uh, roughly. Let me also go in Let's just do a copy paste across the board here. I'll go in and remove these later if I need to. Okay, we'll remove that lesson. Now we're going to get our first drum pattern put in. And I've been using the distorted 808, um, the attack clap, and attack kick. Uh, I don't use these, so I'm going to get rid of them. And that just helps us get a little clean. Uh, so this set is going to be the more chill set before the chorus, so I'm just going to do it on the one. And the three here. And I'm going to change the note of the second one to be higher. And I want this to be C sharp so it matches our key. Okay, yeah, that, that is acceptable. Okay, and then I will do the kicks on a three and one as well.
And then we'll do a clap on three. A clap on one here. And then I'm just going to put in some random shakers on ones and threes to kind of help fill out the space. Now I just want to note that I do have the swing turned up on a couple of these just to give it um, a little more random uh, placement effect. So I'm just going to go in. This will be for our first set. So we'll put this in for eight straight bars. I think we'll do the first chorus here. Let's do our second here. And then for two sections, we'll do the chorus drum. Go back to uh, this one drum. We're going to have a section here where we focus on the melody more or maybe introducing a new sound. And then we'll do our second drum set for our chorus there. Back into a one for uh, a few sets later. And then I think we'll do another rest. Lead up back into one for eight. Then we'll do two. Up to this point. One again. And we'll stop the drums back here. And I think for the last set, we'll do drum one. Everything else will be drum two or unassigned. Let's go ahead and auto name this to change the color. Clone our drum. And now we're just going to change it to be a little more high energy. We're going to add another 808. We're going to change it make sure it's on a three. Gotta make sure we're on key two so this needs to go up one more. I'll go ahead and add and I accidentally moved this one over to four. This needs to be on three. There we go. I'm going to uh, look over this. Let's add another kick here. Let's add uh, an egg shaker here on the ones, on this three. And here's what we got. So now we're just going to go in and fill in the drum two slots. In these places here, we'll leave this one blank. This one will remain blank as well. Since this is a long stretch here, maybe let's cut out the end and the start of this and see how that sounds later. Okay, now we can move on to our melody. Go ahead and random color. And let's choose a sound. So I had 
the magical music box for the song before this, but I don't think that's appropriate. So I'm just going to go and get flex plopped in here. Wait for it to load up. And I think steel drums would be a good sound. Okay, so let's come here. Let's go back to our chords layer, copy the chord, go into melody. And go to our steel drums, paste it in here. And this just kind of gives us an idea of what to work with. I'm going to make sure that these are ungrouped. We'll deselect all this. Okay, and then I'll start with a beat. I think maybe we'll do one across this bar, one here, two here, one up to the third, and a small one. So let's start out with our C sharp. Then we'll go down to A. Then we'll do E and that. And then let's join this. And get a little note there. I think that's a good intro. Let's change it up for this middle section. Let's have this high note go across the four. Let's have this one be our two. We'll leave this as a one. And then change this also to the and then back up with a tinier version. This measure, let's begin with the two here. Do the three measure here. Lower this down. Lower this also down to four measure. Out of four measure. Four beat. So let's work on the final one. So for this final set here, let's do three one, three one, two two. I think for the two, we're going to end on the C and the, and we'll end on C sharp. All right, let's see what we got. So right here, this needs to change.
So that sounds better. I think what I'm going to do change this down here. Maybe do this. And I do have a uh, reverb put on the master volume, so everything's reverbed. I'm going to go here. I'll remove this Edison. Accidentally right click there. Uh, we're going to delete this Edison. Let's go ahead and uh, we're going to do a filter. Uh, there's a click, a slight click to the sound of the steel drum that I want to try to eliminate. seem to have gotten rid of it. I also want to try this at a lower octave. Let's see how it sounds. Yeah, that's not nearly as high energy or fun as this one. Okay, we're just going to paint down our first melody here. Change our color there. We'll do a second melody here. Go back into the first melody. Second melody uh, across a couple bars there. We'll introduce a new instrument as well to keep it interesting. We'll do melody one here. We'll do a third melody here. We'll go back into the second one here. The first will go here. And then let's continue the first one here. We'll add another instrument before going here and focusing on some, We'll go back into melody one here. Leave two uh, across these. Get our melody placed down here. Make sure it's the right level. And uh, We'll put three there, two melody ones here, before we go to the end. I actually think I'm going to put a uh, two melody here, and then we'll do one, two, three at the end. So that's our first set down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone this layer. And then we're going to change this up a bit to make it a little more high energy. So let's just shorten these long notes. And we'll just do that. Anything that's a four bar is going to get shortened in some capacity.
And then let's do a two here. And then here I'll do a two and a quick uh, one on each. So I think that is good for our second basic melody. And let's go in and insert it into the places where I would put the. I didn't set these ones right. Let's uh, fix that up real quick. Okay, uh, then we'll put a two here, a two, uh, set a two here. We'll introduce three in this bar before going to two again. We'll focus on three in that bar. Let's do two here. We'll do two sets of three in this between area. I think that would sound nice. Here we'll focus on a new instrument, a new set of instruments. So let's leave that blank. We'll move two into here and then finish out with a one, two, three. And then as before, we're going to clone this melody. And then I'm going to do a real easy trick. I'm going to go to the tools and we're going to do a flip. And I'm just going to flip things horizontally. And what that does, it just literally flips what was the beginning to the end. And now I'm just going to go in here and edit this. Uh, Go to select everything. We're just going to move everything back into V uh, to the the beat that I had uh, selected before. It's always a little off, so it's good to adjust it if you're trying to go for a perfect beat. So I'm just going to change the end here. Let's um, get something like this. So there's a place, I believe, somewhere al along this measure. Or maybe back here. Yeah, this sounds a little slow. It drags a little bit in between these measures here. So I'm going to go through, shorten some of these down, and add some new notes in these places. I think for these ones, I'm going to change the note. Same here. I 
I think that'll be good for our third bee. Let's place it down in the proper spots. And we're going to leave this one free of the melody, and then we'll end on this. Okay, going to do a quick stream check just to make sure everything's still good. And it looks like we are current. And unfortunately, I just closed the stream manager. Looks like I get to look at things from your perspective. Because it's literally my only option now. Okay, um, bell. So I have this Lonely Bells. What I'm going to do is create a Bells layer. Let's do a random color. And I'll Copy Melody 1 directly into this Lonely Bells. I'm going to go up an octave. And I'm going to uh, lower this down to this. I'm going to change this to a Porta. So it'll pitch up or down depending on the notes around it. So since it's down from this one, it pitches down. Um, if it was above it, you'll see it pitches up. So we're going to put that back into place. And I'm just going to go in and add some of these notes strategically. And I always want to leave one normal note somewhere around the shift change. That way you can hear the shift change happening. Let's get rid of these. We'll do change here. One here. Leave this one blank up to this point. And then I think we'll do our last one here. And here's what it sounds like. So it just kind of gives it an alien whistly noise, sort of. We're going to introduce it in the set after the chorus, and then it'll follow us kind of towards the end. So let's go through find our melody ones and place down our bells one. And to kind of give you an idea what these paired sounds like, I'm going to turn off all of these but these. We're going to make sure that the bell sounds turned up loud enough to where you can hear it. And it's just enough you can barely hear it, but it does create a new texture that wasn't there before. Okay. I'm going to auto name this. I forgot to do that earlier. And let's just go through and complete 
playing down these bell sounds. We're just going to make sure this follows the melody one pattern and we won't put it towards the end we'll leave those steel drums as the main focus of the end part there and now we'll go and do the same thing we're going to clone this we're going to delete everything Go to Melody 2. Copy over Melody 2 into Bells 2. Move it up an octave. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put down the strategic pitch change. And in order for it to work, they can't be doubled up with a similar sound. So you have to have this on a different note layer in order for you to get the effect. And I'm just going through these. Placing down some uh, shift changes here. And I think we'll leave that in blank. So that'll be our bells too. So we're going to start these back here. Make sure these follow melody too. down there and then of course nothing after that point and then rinse and repeat we're going to clone and do a third set here get rid of anything that was there before copy our melody three uh, go into our lonely bells, paste it, move it up an octave, and then we're going to go through and put down our strategic changes. And just shorten that note there just so it matches the rest of the melody. We're going to leave this set clear of it. We want the focus to be on that melody there. So we'll go and add it in later. Uh, 
And again, we'll leave it blank there and at the end. So that concludes the bells section. I don't have a harp anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and delete this row. Okay, and for wood, we've got like a lucky mallet sound. So it's from, again, the flex pack. So what I'm going to do I'm just going to do a set of plucks that are the same note just to give us a little bit of a rhythm. And that kind of gives us a step rhythm, which is nice. And we're just going to make sure we stay in key. And I'm going to add four bars of this. I think I want this last set to be higher. And I like that. So what we'll do is we will add it starting here. I'm going to leave this blank because we're focusing on the melody there. And then continue it in the next set. And we're just going to continue it all the way down. Leave the end, uh, this middle part. We're going to do another focus area. And then the last two bars here with it. So let's give it a listen and see how it's going. I'm going to stop it there. I can tell my computer is breaking up the sound. Let me see if I can just get a cleaner sound. We're going to have to turn wood up a little. We can't hear it. I know it was a little choppy probably, but uh, now we can hear the wood properly in the background ever so slightly. So let's take a look here. This will be our focus on the melody. Here we're adding a new instrument that will follow us here where we'll add another set of new instrument. Let's go ahead and pick one out for this area. I think let's use the nylon starting there. So we'll create a nylon layer. Get a random color. And uh, I'm using the nylon shimmer from the flex pack. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
just try and find a melody that I like. This is going to help, as you can hear, add to like a spacey pad noise in the background, which will help fill out the atmosphere. So I think I'm going to do two uh, measures here. I'll do this one at too long. This one at one, and then we'll do a step down. Uh, that sounds like a good start. Let's go ahead and do the opposite. Let's do two here, one here, and a long one there. Come back up. And then we'll do something similar over here. On this one, we'll do the one measure. And we'll do a one measure at the end, I think at the higher level. We'll make this two, actually. We'll do it at the same note. And then let's do a long sustain here at this note. Okay, so that's good. Aside from the breaking up, because my computer is burning, that is one hot potato. Sounds like unintentional. Uh, vinyl effects happening here. I don't know if you can hear it on your end. But it's probably not pretty. But I can imagine that this is pretty good. Let's just add one final measure. Let's do the two. And then a one and a long. Let's go back up and then come down to C sharp again. Oh, where did everything go? Y'all, I think my computer just decided to uh, devour that bit of information. Let me make sure I'm on the right layer. Okay. It created a new layer. Thank God the work is still here. That reminds me. Let's do a save. Let's just do a quick save, you know, just because and no for any particular reason. Okay. Uh, let's try this again. So I like that. And we're going to introduce it here. And continue it. And let's just make sure it sounds good with the melody we've got. Okay, unintentional vinyl aside, that is working with the melody. Let's go out. I think 
Uh, we will continue it through here and we'll let it accent. Actually, let's not. Let's let the pad uh, part of the strings come out all the way. And then we'll continue here before the finale. And I definitely need to add something here. It, this is looking a little long for the wear, I believe. Yeah, because we basically got 16 measures here, no change. We definitely want to get something added over here. We'll look at that here in a bit. Um, for now, what we're going to do is in this second part here, I'm going to start adding our ace and it'll follow us for a little bit. Uh, let me just update this for the color. We'll create a layer called ace. Um, just get a random color put down. And I'm using the ASA space also from Flex. Uh, what I'll do is I will copy the nylon over. Paste this down. And I think I'm just going to shorten these long ones. And we'll have them at the same notes here to give it some kind of consistency. And let's see if it'll play properly. This pattern. Yeah, that's definitely chugging. Come on, little potato, I believe in you. You can do it. You can play the song. Let's get that put in. Let's make sure it sounds good with everything at the end here. Yeah, no. Now we're in dying music box territory. This has happened on a couple other of my streams where at a certain point the file gets too large, too complicated, and everything just sounds like it's dying. Like that. Like a haunted sound box. I'm going to go ahead and continue. We're almost done. And I really wanted to do this on stream. I will do a final pass check after stream and uh, when my computer's processing power isn't through the roof. And uh, we will uh, just make sure everything is even and not dissonant. Uh, for now, let's add another instrument in. We'll leave that section there. But uh, I think about here we will add a new instrument set. And maybe let's do just two bars so it makes sense as an introduction in this. And then we'll continue it to the end. We will leave it off here, but start it again. And I think I'm going to use my orchestra for that. Let's get this assigned to a random color. 
Now let's update Ace so that its color is matching our layer. And uh, let's open this piano roll. I'm just trying to find the octave I want to operate at. I think we'll do in five. And I remember this is sustained. Let's see how it sounds with the shift up. Make sure these are in the right key. Okay, that's acceptable. I can't really tell. We're getting too scratchy. Okay. Now let's actually get a normal note here. I said I was going to do a 2, but I lied. I'm going to do a 4. Just make sure this is turned off for this one. Before a final pitch down at the end. And we'll add that starting here. So I like that. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change this drum setup and I'm going to put the orchestra starting here so it just matches our beat. I am going to just get rid of this so we can listen to the new orchestra sounds. We're going to continue orchestra in the second. Uh, get rid of this drum here. And I think maybe even continue this on. Let's see what it sounds like in the final bar. Uh, I actually just want to focus on these, and I think just the bass up to here. Okay, so now I just have to figure out what we're going to place in this section. Let's go ahead and insert a new track up here. I think what we'll do is we'll clone this orchestra and uh, I'm going to go ahead and rename this. And it's just going to be the horn section. The original one is just the winds. So let's rename this. Uh, auto name this. And then we'll put our horn section down there. But let's get rid of these pitch shifts there. 
and we will do kind of this. Uh, and I forgot we actually need to do this in a separate instrument, so let's clone uh, this instrument here. There we go. Uh, let's cut this out there, put it into this one, and change the instrument from winds sustained to horns sustained. So that's good. Let's add it in here. Let's make sure this is named. Let's go ahead and group these two together. Come on, you gilly eyes. I know it's here. Okay, there. Maybe let's start it. We want nylon to be free there, so let's start it back here before letting it release and then continue. Uh, we'll leave it blank at ace, bring it back in here. And that's good. Okay, so now we just need to do some cleanup and the volume controllers. So I already have one for the orchestra volume. It's already uh, got both of these assigned because we cloned them. So we're going to go ahead and create an automated clip. Let's just go ahead and drag this over. Where our orchestra begins, right here. And what I'm going to do is create a new envelope here, or a new um, transition here. And what we're going to do, we're going to have it gradually come in. We're going to make sure this top level is back to normal. That's really scratchy. We're going to have to wait. Uh, I believe we don't have to worry about here. It'll end with that bar, so we don't need to fix it in that middle part to fade. But what I would like to do is create another uh, riser. Let's just get in some new points. And we'll just do this. So that it comes back in gently. And then same here. Just some new points. Uh, to where... We'll have it rise up again. And I think I'm just going to move this so it rises quicker in this place. 
And then we'll have a fade out here towards the end. I think that would be nice. So let's find the end point there and move it in. We'll leave it here. And then have a gradual fade out there. Now let's clean this up, just bring it in a bit. And that should do it for the orchestra. I'll go back and proof it later. Uh, now we need to do one for our 808. So we'll create an automated clip there and just um, move it to where the sound starts. Here. And I'm going to go through and in the places where they're supposed to be focused on something, I'm going to make sure that the 808 isn't humming in the background. So you want the points to come back up here. So let's do this in the middle. Make sure this comes back up the proper level. And we'll do it again here. Selecting the point where the sound will disappear and reappear again. And then clicking points in the middle and bringing those into position. We'll do it here as well. Just anywhere there's a drum break. I don't want that 808 to continue. I want to make sure we're maintaining our volume over there. And let's drag this back into position where it starts again. We've got the long break here. So let's get those uh, put into place. The drums start here again. And end there. And then we want it to end here. We don't want that hum at the end of the song. So we're going to add kind of a steep curve, actually. Yeah, right here. A steep slope. That way the last 808 beat gets in there. Uh, but it does not surpass this threshold for the end of the song. Okay. And I think for now that's good. I'd love to play the song for you guys. Let's try and see if my computer will let me. If not, uh, you'll just have to wait and hear it over on our YouTube page when I post. So let's give it a shot. Yeah, unfortunately, 
My little spud is frying. It's not going to let us uh, continue on. So what I think I'll do is as a stream treat, since we made this together and it's kind of public knowledge, uh, next week when I'm posting the stream to YouTube, I'll also post this song as kind of just a, a free snippet of the album coming out. And that way you guys can hear what we've done here on stream as well. So for now, let me save this. And we've got a little bit of time left in our stream. So let's go back and open up our project that we had started on stream last time. And let's just uh, get through it a little bit. You're going to take a moment to load up the potato. It buzzes with electricity. But it does not think. Thinking really hard. You can do it, potato. I believe in you. I don't remember the song being that beefy. I wonder if it's freaking out still from the song we just made. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking this one wasn't wasn't beefy at all. Okay, so it looks like we've got the basic foundations down on this song. Let's go ahead and play it to get a refresher of what it sounded like. So it seems like we left off at our first melody here with a lead up into a chorus melody. So we will definitely get that done. I do kind of like the sustained note, so maybe what we will do is we will put down a melody layer and then we'll add another oboe layer with just sustained notes. Or we can do it in the same, uh, we'll just do it in the same pattern in the piano roll, kind of keep it together. And looks like we've got some strings down here. So those would go there. We will get a new instrument in starting here when the chorus drops off. And then we'll put together an end for the song. So we've got about 35 minutes left, which is great. 
Uh, maybe we can even get this song done too, and you'll get two songs in the next season. Luckily, this one isn't as beefy. I think part of the problem is the Flex plugin. It's really strenuous and seems to take up a lot of uh, brain power for the potato. We don't want the potato to think too hard. So, uh, since these ones are mostly sound fonts, it shouldn't be as detrimental to my computer's health as the original. Uh, I see we have a new viewer. Welcome to the stream. Uh, we just finished making a song that's going to go on an album we're going to release uh, on September 13th. Uh, right now we are working on a song we started in last week's stream. It's just a chill beat that'll be in the background of our art videos sometime in the future. So, first thing I'm going to work on, let's do our oboe chorus. Get that in there. And on this song, I also didn't do any drum lead-ups, and we'll revisit that in the future. Just to kind of give it more interest. Uh, for now, let's do our oboe. Let's clone this layer here. Go into our oboe sound font, and since I liked the sustained notes, let's go ahead and get uh, long notes down here at the bottom. Like that. Now I want to change up this melody, vary it a bit more. I kept these like a staccato, and so let's get a couple more sustained notes in here as well. I'll just make these a little longer. Uh, not all of them though. Let's keep a couple of these short. This is uh, in the H section. Not a fan of it. Let's move it. Alright, let's see how that sounds so far. So that sounds fine. This F is dissonant. So let's move that. Let's get descent notes put into here. And I kind of like that pause before this note plays, so let's leave it like that. Get these out a little longer. Make this a two note. Make this one a little longer. Let's do three on this one. Well, I hope you guys like the sound of Ovo. You're getting a lot of Ovo. Okay, let's see what this sounds like now.
Okay, so just a couple of places. This needs to be a different note. And then here we need one more note there. And that sounds perfect. So let's get our melody put. Okay. Let's go ahead and get the first one put up here. Let's do it three times. We'll add new instruments to keep this interesting. Then we'll do lead up a layer back into uh, Looks like I've got something a little shorter. Nope, I'm just gilly brained. I didn't have that in the right position. Okay. So it looks like Nope, nope, definitely something is shorter than it's supposed to be. Because here, everything matches up fine. And here, I had to extend the end for some reason. And it is this one. This one's a little shorter. For some odd reason. Let's take it over to inspect it. It's the front part. There we go. The front part there was cut off. Let's get that into place. And we'll go back into second melody. Let's just make sure that sounds good with everything. And something is definitely off there in the beats. So we'll need to go in and adjust that. Let's do two here. One. Let's actually do a lead up here. And then we'll go oboless for this middle section. Obo lead up in these four bars. Back into obo two. And then obo one. And I think we'll end the song around here, so let's cut those noises down. And let's do a lead up here, and an oboe too here. And let's just get this out a couple bars, and we'll do a fade. Uh, towards the end there later on. So let's investigate what's going on with these drums. Let's start here and see if it matches up with the oboe here. And it does, but here where we're having the problem. Let's go into drum two. Let's get an inspection going. And I kind of already see the problem. I've got uh, these ones on two, this one's on two, this one's on four, this one's on a four. But I start with a one here. So that can cause some problems. In the piece. So let's move this down. Make sure everything's on a 2 or a 4. See if that fixed anything. And it did not. Let me check my swing here. My swing may be up too high. 
somewhere on these. And everything's within quite an acceptable range. There's nothing too crazy. So maybe the problem is these are on twos and fours. Let's go check out. I just want to make sure I have a beat start on every two and four. And not a uh, this should be a fine towards the end. That's really, really offbeat. Let's see. Let's see if drum one works. No, it's even off from drum one, so we definitely need to fix the oboe. I believe I remember this being a problem last stream. My galley brain just forgot uh, when we did the oboe one in lead up. I had to go through and make sure they were exactly on beat. So let's take a look here. And it seems to be off from the very start, even. So maybe let's start with a long note. That helped fix some of it. Yeah, definitely something's off. I'm going to let's bring all that back. Let's just undo so we can get original melody. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to clone this. We'll leave layer three the same just so we can preserve it. And let's see if we can't make this melody work as closely as possible. Let me go through and turn the swing off the drums and see if that fixes the problem. Yeah, that still didn't fix the problem. Let me just go back. So the swing's all back on. Okay, so while the beat is good on its own, it's not good with our uh, gotta reclone this, accidentally undid it. It's not good with the drum beat that we have. So, unfortunately, it's gonna have to change. I'm going to delete all this. And I'm going to go to our drum two and let's put in, I think we did this last time where we had to put in where every note is going to go. Cut it from here. 
and go in, paste it. Let's see if that fixed the pacing issue. Well, it did. Now it's all boring as heck, but it fixed it. Okay, let's go in. Place proper. Okay, uh, let's go back in, add our notes like before. Just gonna zoom to fit the four bars. Let's get our sustained notes down. We're going to want to have a note begun on every uh, one of these lines, probably. I'm going to do one single one here, a couple of short ones here. Just like that. And let's add another long one. Lower. And let's see how our first bar sounds. Yeah, again, kind of boring. But let's see if it matches our beat. Okay, it's working, so this is what we're going to run with. And I'm going to fix it up in the places that I can. So it looks like we want it in every two or four. So starting in two or starting in four, or being in a two and a four. So, this starts on a 2, this starts on a 4, it'll be on B. Let's fill up some of these spaces. That's a little odd over there. Let's try this. Maybe getting a third in here won't sound as bad. Okay. Um Let's make this one slightly longer. Let's make this a different note. Okay, that's better. Um, we'll do a single one there. Do one that ends over there. Get a bunch of staccatos up in here. Okay, 
That may be too high. Let's see. That's actually fine. That can bring us into a bit of a higher octave for this bar. And then we'll bring it back down for the end bar. Gotta make sure I start that on the two or we'll be off beat again. I think I want to end on a C. A long C there. Maybe let's get a two and there. Okay, that works. I don't think it's as interesting as our original layout, but it's what fixed the problem. So that's what we'll be working with. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and move on. We want to probably add some more instruments in here. Kind of flush this out. Let me auto name this. And it looks like instead of the drum lead ups, I was using a crash, a uh, reverse crash. So let's just continue that so the song is nice and proper. And we'll just put that kind of anywhere there's a change in the drums or a major change in the. And then I'll just kind of help soften those transitions. Okay, so let's go back into our instrument panel here and see what we have. So I also have a bassoon and flutes, and I think we'll go ahead and use those to flesh out the rest of our. So let's kind of see about here. Maybe let's start bassoon. Let's copy this, start a new layer, or bassoon layer. Let's get a random color. And let's just get rid of every other note. These are already staccato, so lengthening them out won't be of benefit. Let's make sure they're on every two and four. So everything works. And here's what we have. Let's definitely lower it. Get this down here. Auto name this. We'll just do the same for the lead up.
Okay, that's acceptable. And let's do a second one for the Bobo part two. Get rid of all these. I guess it's uh, Obo 3 actually. Oh no, that was our original. I can get rid of that. Obo 2. Down to Bassoon 2. Now we're going to bring it down at that octave. So it's in the range we want. I think I'm going to get rid of all these uh, I did that backwards. Uh, we want to get rid of all these long notes because we're already um, at a staccato. So we don't need long notes. And let's see how this sounds. So it's a little naked on its own, but it is supposed to be a compliment, so let's put it in. That is good. Let's go ahead and save this so we can wrap up for today. And my computer can rest its little potato head. Okay. So, overall, not too bad. I'll be sure to post um, the music next week that we've created here today. Uh, we didn't finish that one song, but that's fine. Uh, we can definitely come back to it later. Uh, so thank you guys for stopping by and watching. Thank you for all your support and care. And uh, for taking an interest in me. So, for now, we'll see you next time. So until then, have fun space friends! <laughs>